Today I'm going to be doing the compatibility chart between Jessica Simpson and her husband Eric by request. But before I get started, if you're interested in hearing about more synastry charts, hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop. Now, her north node conjuncts his point of fortune, two degrees. This has to do with fate and karma. His Jupiter conjuncts her Juno and Eros, one degree. This is really nice. Jupiter and Juno were married. So this to me is a strong indication of soulmate connection. It's also, Jupiter's also conjuncting her Eros and that has to do with eroticism. So this is really nice. Her Jupiter conjuncts his North Node, Lilith and Ambrosia. Jupiter conjuncting your North Node from the other person, this indicates um, really good luck, good fortune, and optimism. Now, her Jupiter conjuncting his Lilith, that has to do with sexuality. So I said before that Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system and it magnifies whatever it touches. So in this case, this translates into a lot of sexual intimacy. And it's at one degree, so that's pretty tight. Her Jupiter also conjuncts his Ambrosia, two degrees, and Ambrosia has the energies of longevity. So if I had done this synastry chart for them when they got married, I would have said that this marriage is going to last a long time because also her Saturn conjuncts his sun one degree, I'm sorry, zero degrees. That is the tightest orb that you can have between aspects in, and asteroids as well with planets. It's just, uh, it's super tight and Saturn is the glue that will hold this relationship together. It's conjuncting his sun and that is a very important luminary in a compatibility chart. His Venus and Union conjuncts her Mars one degree. This is really nice as well. Venus conjuncting Mars between two people can also signify a soulmate connection, especially if there are other aspects that signify that. And in this chart, Juno conjuncting Jupiter. So this is really nice. And Union conjuncting her Mars that has, uh, that has to do with togetherness and, and marriage. It's also, uh, these, these, the energies between Venus and Mars conjunction is also uh, a magnetic sexual attraction. And they have, in the planetary department as well, his Pluto trines her Venus one degree. And that indicates passion, love, and lust. Her Agapenor conjuncts his ascendant two degrees. Agapenor... That asteroid has to do with unconditional love and friendship. And since it's conjuncting his ascendant at two degrees, that's really nice. And the ascendant is an angle, which are, the angles are very important in a compatibility chart. So this is a very nice placement. And now his Agapenor and Swindle conjuncts her Lilith one degree. I've already explained what Agapenor means, but we have Swindle in there as well. And Swindle has to do with um, cheating, lying, or fraudulent behavior. But I'm going to remove Swindle from this mix, and I'm going to tell you why. First of all, Swindle is conjuncting her Lilith three degrees. Agapenor is conjuncting her Lilith one degree. I have to, if I was going to take Swindle into consideration for this aspect, I would have to find other cheating indications in the chart as well. And I don't find any. So since Agapenor is at one degree and Swindle is at three degrees, Agapenor wins. So goodbye to Swindle. Her psyche conjuncts his vertex three degrees. The vertex, another really important point in a compatibility chart. It's like a second descendant and 
whatever conjuncture vertex from the other person, you will receive those energies. And in this case, her psyche, love, passion, and soul. So these are all really, really nice placements in this chart. I'm going to get to the flip side of the coin because in a compatibility chart or relationship, there's always the opposite side of the coin. But you want all of the good stuff to outweigh the challenging parts in a relationship. And in this case, I think that this is a really, this is excellent due to the Jupiter conjuncting Juno and Venus conjuncting Mars and the other things that I already went over. Now, his Pan and Alma conjuncts her moon two degrees equally. Now, they don't have any positive moon-moon aspects between the two of them, which I think is extremely important in a relationship. Now, if you don't have any positive moon-moon aspects between the two of you, it would be necessary to see if there are any um, backups that can negate the lack of positive moon-moon aspects. And in this case, this is one of them. Alma is the Spanish word for soul. So that asteroid conjuncting her moon, two degrees, that's excellent. But we also have Pan in there. And Pan has to do with partying and alcohol abuse. Now, I think at one point she had said, I don't know why I'm drinking like this. And I don't know why this is happening. Well, <laughs> it's right here in the chart. Pan has to do with alcohol abuse and partying. And it's conjuncting her moon. Very important luminary in a compatibility chart. You will get those energies and it will affect you deeply. Also, his point of fortune conjuncts her north node and Pan and Echo, Depres and Asbolus all within two degrees. Now I've said before that the point of fortune conjuncting her north node is indications of fate and karma. But now we have all of these other asteroids in the mix that have certain energies that coincide with that. And I'm going to explain what those are. Now his point of fortune, uh, I've said that it's like a mini Jupiter, so it magnifies whatever it touches. And it's conjuncting her pan, one degree. Again, we have alcohol abuse and partying. It's conjuncting her echo, two degrees. And echo has the energies of either being a codependent or dependent on another person or not being able to find your voice in, in certain situations. Uh, Depres is also there, two degrees, and Depres has to do with depression. So I think that there is depression somewhere along the line. Uh, and I think it has to do with her career, because that's where all of this, all of these asteroids are, are in the 10th house, as Bolas is there as well, being conjuncted by his point of fortune. And as Bolas has to do with hidden secrets or mysteries or just bad experiences um, centered around certain things. And in this mix, it's like I said, the 10th house. Now his point of fortune is in the sign of Leo and Leo is ruled by the sun. So to me, this signifies that the sun is shedding a light. It, it's putting a spotlight on all of these issues regarding the alcohol or codependency and problems and mysteries that have popped up in her career, depression. So the sun putting a spotlight on all of these shows the basic theme surrounding her life experiences because whatever conjuncts your north node in your natal chart will show you some of the themes or the basic theme in your life. Now, his Astarte conjuncts her Dionysus, two degrees. Again, um, that has to do with alcohol abuse, and uh, Astarte has to do with arguments, blow-ups, 
And since it's, con it's conjuncting her Dionysus, then they had arguments over her drinking. Now, I'm going to get to the part where um, there's, this is interesting because there's, the sun is involved and the moon, the most important luminaries in a compatibility chart, the only luminaries actually, but her sun conjuncts his moon, one degree. That's excellent because it signifies a best friend's aspect. However, we have Nessus going on here and Nessus has to do with abuse. Now, I'm not saying they're abusive towards each other. In normal circumstances, I would bring that into, that would come into play. However, this is different because his Nessus is conjuncting her Nessus. And since the luminaries are involved, I would dissect this and look at their natal charts because that makes more sense to me. Now, in a natal chart, the sun represents the father and her Nessus is conjuncting her son. So this indicates to me that she had a father that was emotionally manipulating and there was dissension between her and her father. Now in his natal chart, his moon conjuncts his Nessus and the moon represents the mother. So I would have to say that his mother could have been emotionally manipulation Manip manipulative as well because this is all in the sign of cancer. Now it's interesting because in his natal chart Pluto is squaring his moon and it's in the 12th house. His second house the ruler is Scorpio and Scorpio is the ruler of Mars and Pluto. The second house represents your very er early childhood. So the Pluto being in the 12th house, this indicates some sort of secrecy involved. And since his Mars is conjuncting his moon, that's also, um, there's something secretive about his mother. I don't know what, but I'm just telling you what the chart is telling me. And I'm getting off on a tangent, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to get to the planetary, a planetary aspect that I think is important. I, I picked one that's really, really tight. And that has also has to do with Pluto. His moon squares her Pluto, zero degrees. That's really tight. This indicates power struggles and the moon has emotional issues and can be hypersensitive towards the Pluto person, which is her. She can be emotionally domineering or uh, possessive towards him and, and needy. Also, uh, his Neptune opposes her Venus one degree, and this indicates an over-idealization um, towards him. She looks at this relationship through rose-colored glasses sometimes, and she um, thinks that he's just... She doesn't see him for what he really is all of the time. It, it, to me, this is pretty much minor, but I had to throw that out there. If you're interested in hearing about more Sinistry charts, like I said, hit the subscribe button and uh, I will be back soon. Thanks for watching.